Hey everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. Today we're talking plants. More specifically, how to keep yours alive and thriving. That's right, we're tackling a topic that seems to plague a lot of plant lovers over watering. It really does. I've definitely been guilty of it myself. Luckily for all of us, we've got this article, Are You Drowning Your Plants Without Knowing It? <laughs> to help us avoid that soggy plant fate. And it's packed with great advice. It really is. You know, it's funny because when you think about caring for plants, it seems pretty intuitive, right? Water equals happy plants. Yeah, you'd think so. But as this article points out, it's way too easy to go overboard with the watering can. It's like that with a lot of things in life. A good thing in excess isn't so good anymore. And when it comes to your plants, overwatering can actually be a huge problem. Mm. The article even uses the phrase drowning your plants. It's a pretty powerful image, right? It is. Now, obviously, plants don't have lungs. They don't breathe in the same way we do. Mm. But their roots need oxygen to survive. And when the soil is constantly soaked, it creates this environment where harmful bacteria and fungi can thrive. So it's like they're suffocating. Exactly. And that's what leads to root rot, which is definitely not what we want. So if we're seeing our plants drooping, even if the soil is wet, that's a sign that we might be overdoing it with the watering. Exactly. Drooping leaves are like your plant desperately trying to signal, hey, I can't breathe down here. Okay, got it. So how can we make sure we're not drowning our plants? Well, the article mentions the classic finger test, and mm -hmm. honestly, it's a classic for a reason. It's super simple and works like a charm. So tell us, how do we do the finger test? It's easy. Before you even think about grabbing your watering can, just stick your finger about an inch into the soil. If it feels dry at that depth, then you can give your plant a good drink. If it's still damp or cool to the touch, then hold back on the watering for a bit. Give it some time to dry out. Makes sense. Now, the article also talked about the importance of using well-draining soil. Can you elaborate on that a bit? What exactly makes soil well-draining and why is it so important? Good question. So well-draining soil basically means that it allows excess water to drain away easily. This is crucial because it allows those roots to get the oxygen they need. There are a few... Okay. And I know you mentioned cocoa core and rice husk earlier. Do those also help with drainage? They absolutely do. Cocoa core is great at retaining moisture while still allowing for good airflow. And rice husk is another fantastic addition for creating that light and airy texture that your plants will love. And of course, the pot itself plays a role too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The pot is just as important as the soil. You always want to make sure your pot has drainage holes. This might seem obvious, but it's easy to overlook. Those holes allow that excess water to escape so your plant's roots don't end up sitting in a soggy swamp. Right. It's like their personal plumbing system. Exactly. And the material of the pot can make a difference, too. Terracotta pots, for example, are porous, so they can actually help wick away excess moisture. Ah. Okay. While plastic pots, they tend to hold on to water a bit more. So that's something to keep in mind when you're choosing your pot. I see. So you might want to water a little less frequently if you're using a plastic pot compared to a terracotta one. That's a good tip. Speaking of tips, I have to ask about these moisture meters the article mentioned. Are those really necessary or just a fancy gadget for plant enthusiasts? Well, I wouldn't say they're absolutely necessary, but they can be incredibly helpful, especially for beginners who are still getting a feel for their plant's needs. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, think about it. The finger test is great, but it only gives you information about the top inch or so of soil. True. A moisture meter, on the other hand, allows you to actually measure the moisture level deeper down in the pot, which can give you a much more accurate idea of how wet or dry the soil actually is. So it takes the guesswork out of it. Exactly. And that can be a game changer, especially if you're dealing with a plant that's a little more finicky. This has been so insightful. Just to quickly recap everything we talked about today, we learned that overwatering is a real threat to our plant babies, but we can prevent it by using the finger test, making sure we've got well-draining soil with things like perlite or vermiculite, choosing pots with good drainage, and maybe even considering a moisture meter. Absolutely. Those are all fantastic takeaways. And remember, every plant is unique. Once you've got the basics down, doing a little research on your specific plant's watering needs can make a world of difference. Some plants just naturally like it a bit drier, while others prefer things more consistently moist. It's all about finding that sweet spot. That's such great advice. It's all about paying attention to our plant's 